ways Stay away from the major sins Ignore the whispers of the Shayatin Oh Lord, have mercy on our souls Stay away, stay away from the major sins Ignore the whispers of the Shayatin Oh Lord, have mercy on our souls Oh Lord, mercy Stay away, stay away from the major sins Ignore the whispers Oh Lord, oh Lord Have mercy on us, have mercy on us Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu Brothers and sisters, welcome to a brand new episode 26 ways to be a good Muslim parent with myself Muhammad Tim Humble And in this episode, insha'Allah ta'ala we're going to talk about teaching your children to know Allah, teaching your children to understand who Allah is, and teaching your children to appreciate the blessings of Allah upon you, and teaching your children to have muraqaba of Allah, to have a knowledge that Allah sees them, to have ihsan in their worship. And this we can take from Surah Luqman, from the advice of Luqman to his son. Ya Bunayya. إِنَّهَا إِن تَكُ مِثْقَالَ حَبَّةٍ مِنْ خَرْدَلْ فَتَكُنْ فِي صَخْرَةٍ أَوْ فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ أَوْ فِي الْأَرْضِ يَأْتِ بِهَا اللَّهِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَطِيفٌ خَبِيرٌ Oh my son, if there were to be as little as a mustard seed and this mustard seed were to be on a rock or in the heavens or on the earth Allah Azza wa Jal would bring it forth. Indeed, Allah Azza wa Jal is Latifun Khabir. Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala is aware of the most subtle things. And Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala is Khabir. Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala knows everything in the heavens and the earth. In this ayah, we can see that Luqman is teaching his son about Allah who Allah is and this is so important for us as parents that we teach our children from the earliest age who Allah is we teach them to know Allah Azza wa Jal we already spoke in a previous episode about teaching them to fear Allah rather than to fear their parents but teaching them to know who Allah is and again I personally think this is a much neglected point many people teach perhaps the basics of this but we want children more than anything to have knowledge of who their Lord is. This is particularly relevant in our time when atheism and agnosticism has spread even to the lands of the Muslims. So it's particularly relevant that we teach our children who Allah is. But this is critical for every Muslim, regardless of their situation. Because knowing who Allah is, is a fundamental part of worshipping Allah. And it's a fundamental part of fearing Allah. As for it being a fundamental part of worshipping Allah, then the ayat of the Qur'an that mention who Allah is, that mention the Lordship of Allah, what Allah does, the rububiyyah of Allah, Allah's creation, Allah's provision, Allah's giving life and death, then these ayat are followed by a command to worship Him. And this gives us a clear understanding that the worship of Allah is based upon knowing who Allah is. And that is why Allah has said, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ I have only created the jinn and men to worship me alone. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in another place in the Qur'an says, it is Allah created the seven heavens and from the earth equal to them. He sends down his command between them. لِتَعْلَمُوا So that you may know that Allah Azza wa Jal is able to do all things. لِتَعْلَمُوا أَنَّ اللَّهَ عَلَى كُلِّ شَيْءٍ قَدِيرٌ وَأَنَّ اللَّهَ قَدَ أَحَاطَ بِكُلِّ شَيْءٍ عِلْمًا That Allah is able to do all things and that Allah has surrounded everything in his knowledge. So these two ayat together tell us that Allah created the heavens and the earth in order that we know Allah and Allah created us in order to worship Him and there is no contradiction between these two 
rather knowing Allah is what leads you to worship Allah. And you worship Allah based upon your knowledge of who Allah is. So teaching your children to know who Allah is, is fundamental to them fulfilling their purpose of worshipping their creator. And indeed to worship your creator, you need to know who that creator is. But likewise, knowing who Allah Azzawajal is and knowing the names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, knowing the description of Allah Azzawajal as Luqman described to his son about the knowledge of Allah, about the fact that Allah Azzawajal sees everything and hears everything. Every single one of the names of Allah that you learn has a meaning and it has an application in your life. Sometimes more than one application. And sometimes one of the sad things that we do with regard to our children is that we teach them the name without teaching them how to apply it in their life. So let's look at what Luqman said to his son. Oh my son, and look at the way he calls him, Ya Bunay. He didn't say Ya Bunay, oh my son. He said, my little son, Ya Bunay, my beloved son. Bunayya, here is Tasghir, it's in the diminutive means my beloved son, my little son, if there was as little as a mustard seed. And he's giving an example now, an example you can relate to, because you know what a mustard seed, and it was in a rock, or in the heavens or in the earth, Allah would bring it forth. And so he's building an awareness, and a muraqaba of Allah in the heart and in the soul of his son. So he's building an awareness or a knowledge that Allah Azzawajal is watching him and a feeling that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is watching him and again this relates to what we said about hope and fear he's not saying to his son I'm watching you I know what you're doing he's saying to his son Allah is watching you and Allah knows what you are doing so he's building that muraqaba of Allah that feeling that Allah is watching you and that ihsan, what is ihsan as the Prophet ﷺ defined it in Sahih Muslim in the hadith of Jibreel. أَن تَعْبُدَ اللَّهَ كَأَنَّكَ تَرَى فَإِن لَمْ تَكُنْ تَرَاهُ فَإِنَّهُ يَرَاك That you worship Allah as though you can see Him. And even though you cannot see Him, you know that He can see you. And this is a perfect example of teaching your children to know Allah in a practical way. Teaching your children to know Allah in such a way that your children feel like there is a practical aspect to that. There's a way to implement that. So they know Allah can see them and they know that means that they have to be conscious of Allah. They know that Allah can hear them and they know that means they have to be careful about what they say. They know that Allah is the most merciful so they are conscious that they never lose hope in Allah. And they know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is severe in punishment. And so they never stop fearing Allah. And insha'Allah ta'ala, we will speak more about this insha'Allah in the second part of the episode. How we can teach our children to know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and how we can give them a practical implementation of that knowledge. How we can get them to go beyond just learning names or just learning ayat of the Quran and actually getting practical knowledge about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that leads to them fearing Allah azza wa jal in their life and so that is what we take from this statement of Luqman alayhi salam when he said this to his son and inshallah after the break we're going to cover this in more detail until then assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Stay away, stay away from the major sins Ignore the whispers of the shayhatun Scientific notions in the glorious Quran are among its endless aspects that can testify for the divine nature of this noble book. These scientific notions are probably the best addressed to the people of our time.
I am Zardun al Najjar. Please join me in this program to discuss some aspects of the scientific notions in the glorious Quran. <laughs> Appreciate the word-to-word -word authenticity of scientific notions and proven facts mentioned in the glorious Quran 1400 years ago in Scientific Notions in the Glorious Quran. Tomorrow at 8 p.m. and repeat telecast at 8.30 a.m. India on Peace TV. Marriage or divorce? What's Islamic ruling? Nika. Solution or problem? Heaven or hell? Uh, there is a misconception. You choose. Beauty, wealth, family status, virtue. Decide what you want. Decide your choice. Be sad or be happy. It's your choice. Join Dr. Zakir Naik in Better Half or Bitter Half next on Peace TV. Stay away from the major sins. Ignore the whispers of the shayhatin. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Welcome back, brothers and sisters. So we came to the ayah, Ya Bunayya innaha intaku mithqala habbatin min khardal fatakun fi sakhratin aw fi samawati aw fi al-ardi ya'ti biha Allah inna Allah latifun khabir. Oh my son, if there were as little as a mustard seed in a rock or in the heavens or the earth, Allah would bring it forth. Indeed, Allah is latifun khabir. So we said, that this is quite clear in the ayah because while Luqman is explaining that Allah is Al-Latif Al-Latif Al-Khabir he gives a practical example of what that means an implementation that the child can practice in their life what does it mean that Allah is Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim means he's the most merciful, the bestower of mercy but what does that mean? give me an example an example, look at the mercy Allah had upon such and such, upon the man who killed 99 men, then he killed another to make it 100, then he repented and Allah had mercy upon him. Mercy Allah had upon the person who brought 99 scrolls of their evil deeds and could not have a single good deed among them, except this bitaqa, this card with, upon which was written, La ilaha illallah, so Allah Azza wa Jal forgave them and made La ilaha illallah outweigh those bad deeds. So subhanallah, it's about giving practical examples. Look at how Luqman gives a practical example. If there were a mustard seed, as little as a mustard seed, in a rock or in the heavens of the earth, Allah would bring it forth. What does this mean? In Allah latif al khabir. This is the meaning of Allah being latif, that Allah knows the most subtle things. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is subtle and he knows the tiniest of things and he can bring the tiniest of things forth and Allah is Al-Khabir the one who knows everything the one who is aware of everything the all aware and so he gives an example of this and this is very important and what I want you to take most from this ayah is the practical nature of implementing the knowledge your child knows Knowing Allah is the greatest form of knowledge that a Muslim can have, to know your Lord. But if it doesn't lead to action, it doesn't benefit. And one of the things I wanted to talk about in this second part of the episode is a problem that I see among many parents and many children. Is that these children, in terms of knowledge, I see some children, I feel they're far above me in knowledge. I feel they know more than me. So much knowledge. But when you look at that child, you don't see any of that knowledge in action. And this is a problem that adults have. 
we all have, we feel this about ourselves. We think how little do we act upon what we know. And Allahumma'sta'an, Allah's help is sought about how little we act upon what we know. But the greater concern is not only do we sometimes not act upon what we know, but sometimes we instill the same sort of behavior in our children. So what we want to change in this, or what we want to give as a tip for good parenting in this, is that when you teach your child something, immediately think, how can I give this a practical dimension? How can I see whether my child is practicing what they know? So you teach your child about the voluntary prayers. You don't teach them about the voluntary prayers and then the next time the prayer comes, allow them only to pray the fart. You have to see them practice it. They have to practice it in their life. Every time you teach them, ask them to practice. Some parents may say, but that means I'm going to have to teach my children really slowly because my child wouldn't be able. I teach them a hundred things in a day. And this is exactly what I'm saying. That I see some of these children that subhanallah, they learn in a day hundreds and hundreds of things about Islam. But nobody ever checks to see whether they practice those things, whether they implement them in their lives. And I believe that the stronger method of teaching, the better way of teaching, the way of teaching that is closer to the sunnah when it comes to these aspects, is to allow your child to learn slowly, but to require them to act upon whatever they know. It is said about the companions, or some of the companions said, radiallahu ta'ala anhum, that we did not used to go beyond the memorization of 10 ayat before we learned their meaning and we acted upon them. They were not in a rush to be Hafidh al Quran. This is from the way of teaching in our times. This is not from the Sunnah in anything. That they were not of a rush to be Hafidh al Quran. They were in a rush to implement the Quran, to practice the Quran. So they would go 10 by 10 by 10 by 10 ayat. Every 10 ayat, they would not move on from them until they understood what those ayat meant and they acted upon them. And subhanallah, what would that mean to them to be hafiz? Hafiz. It would mean to be hafiz according to the true meaning of the word. That they had memorized those ayat and they were living those ayat. Kana khuluquhul Qur'an. His mannerisms, his method, his characteristics, everything was the Qur'an. His personality, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, was the Qur'an. It's like being a walking Qur'an, a living Qur'an. The companions followed this example. They did not finish the Qur'an like we see the Hafiz today. Finish the Qur'an, Hafiz al-Qur'an. And we sometimes see them doing haram, going out, living haram, eating haram, earning haram, lying, cheating, stealing, all sorts of problems. Because the only hift they have is to know what order the words come in. And wallahi, wallahi, this is not hift. Wallahi, uqsim billah, I swear to you by Allah, this is not hift. To simply know what order the words come in and be able to repeat them, this is not hift. And this will not add your place in Jannah in anything. But what will increase your place in Jannah, what will raise your rank in Jannah, is not hifth in the meaning of remembering the order of the words, but hifth as in knowing the words and acting upon them. Guarding the Quran, memorizing the Quran by making it a practical part of your life. And so, I'm not saying you shouldn't send your children to tahfif. You should send your children and let them memorize the Qur'an as early as they can. It's a wonderful thing. But what I am saying is don't neglect the practical aspect of your child's Islamic learning. If it's a matter of who knows the most raw details, the most facts, then I think Iblis would beat you and I. I think that Iblis would beat both you and me in knowing about Allah Azza wa Jal, in knowing facts about Allah, in knowing the truth of Jannah and Jahannam. Iblis would beat you and I. But how much of that does Iblis act upon? Zero. Absolutely zero. Whereas you and I hope to act upon as much as we know. Knowledge is either a witness for you, a witness against you. It's either going to be a source of raising your rank in Jannah or lowering 
yourself down the levels of the hellfire وَالْعِيَاذُ billah. So we have to ask ourselves what we want our knowledge to be And if we want our children's knowledge to be of benefit to them and to us Because we said what we want out of this وَوَلَدٌ صَالِحٌ يَدْعُ لَهُ A pious child that makes dua for them For us to get that we have to talk about implementing what they know And not just talk about them knowing facts about Islam Because Iblis knows a lot of facts about Islam but it didn't benefit him anything A lot of children I see today, biggest problem I see in kids Recently took a whole load of kids out for a winter camp Went out, spoke with the kids, we spent a week with them, playing with them, teaching them And I found these children's factual knowledge of Islam to be amazing Just their memorization of the seerah alone Some of them could have comfortably passed a seerah exam in a top Islamic university Even though they were, you know, between 10 and 15 years old some of them could comfortably have passed a seerah exam in a top Islamic university But when we came to talk about problems in life, we found a lot of issues with those kids We found a lot of haram, a lot of problems And yet their Islamic knowledge was excellent Really good So what's the problem? The problem was implementing, putting it into practice And this is really what we have to understand So when it comes to knowing Allah, it's not about memorizing the names of Allah it's about memorizing the names of Allah and then knowing them Now one strategy you can do is because we know very young children have limited ability to understand But they often have a very good memory There's nothing wrong with encouraging your child to memorize at a very young age Letting them finish the Quran And then going back through it And going through the implementation And the understanding And the halal and the haram There's nothing wrong with that so I'm not saying, please don't understand from me that I'm saying your child should not do hifth, your child should not learn the seerah. No, but what I'm saying is, if you are loading them with information when they're very young, because they've got the ability to memorize, that's fine. But make sure that when you load them with that information, you at some point have a clear plan as to how you're going to turn that information into real value, which is action. As Allah Azza wa Jal mentioned in Surah Al-Zumar أَمَّنْ هُوَ قَانِتٌ آنَاءَ اللَّيْلِ As for the one who is devoutly obedient during the night Standing, prostrating, bowing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala أَمَّنْ هُوَ قَانِتٌ آنَاءَ اللَّيْلِ سَاجِدًا وَقَائِمًا Prostrating and standing يَذْكُرُ الْآخِرَةِ As we hear in the ayah in Surah Al-Zumar In which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says أَمَّنْ هُوَ قَانِتٌ آنَاءَ اللَّيْلِ سَاجِدًا وَقَائِمًا يَحْذَرُ الْآخِرَةَ وَيَرْجُ رَحْمَةَ رَبِّهِ قُلْ هَلْ يَسْتَوِ الَّذِينَ يَعْلَمُونَ وَالَّذِينَ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ Allah Azza wa Jal said As for the one who is devoutly obedient Standing at night Prostrating Standing During the prayer Fearing the hereafter, hoping for the mercy of his Lord Say, are those who know equal to those who do not know? Now what I want you to understand from this ayah Is that Allah Azza wa Jal described people of knowledge And Allah Azza wa Jal described people of no knowledge How did Allah Azza wa Jal describe the people of knowledge? They are those who stand at night in prayer they are those who bow to Allah, they are those who are devoutly obedient They are those who hope for what is with Allah They are those who fear the hereafter That's how Allah described the people of knowledge Not as people who have factual recall And this is the meaning of the statement of Allah min ulama. Nobody really fears Allah From his slaves except for the scholars because they are those who implement what they know Not those who have factual recall So this is really important We want to teach our children to know Allah We want to take the example of Luqman Teach them the practical meaning of Allah's names Teach them what each name means for them And when we teach them knowledge We want them to have a practical understanding Of what that knowledge means 
and a practical understanding of how to implement it in their lives. We want to take them and judge them based on how much of their knowledge they implement as opposed to how much of their knowledge they know. And a further evidence of this is the hadith in which a person will be asked about his knowledge that the foot of the servant will not be moved on the day of judgment until he is asked about five things. And one of them is وَأَنْ عِلْمِهِ مَاذَا عَمِلَ بِهِ And about his knowledge, how much of it did he act upon? And I think that's a very sobering thought to leave us with. And that's all we have time for in this episode. Until next time, Salaamu Alaikum Wa Rahmatullahi Wa Barakatuh. Allah.